I'm Tharna Noor for The Real News, uh, and I'm heading back from Iowa covering uh, Sanders' record turnout rallies there. And look who I ran into on the plane on the way back. <laughs> Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York, of course. Thanks so much for doing this. Yeah, of course. Thank you for, for reaching out. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to start by asking you about um, the fact that former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg might be throwing his hat in the race this presidential uh, cycle. Um, you know, Vox just found that uh, Jeff Bezos apparently was encouraging him to, to run. What do you what's your response to this as somebody who's, you know, a New York City native and uh, someone who's been really critical of Amazon? Yeah, well, I think right now billionaires are seeing that the tide is turning in the United States and that um, we're going to have to make real structural changes to our country and to our policy. And that may result in things like a wealth tax. It may result in um, in in other sorts of changes so that we can start returning to our roots of guaranteeing certain economic rights in the United States, like health care, education and more. And um, and I think they don't I don't you know, I don't know what's always behind their motivations, but I don't think it's necessarily what we need right now. But, you know, he's choosing to ignore four out of the five early states. I think that really shows um, exactly the, the kind of level of commitment there is there to everyday people in, in states like S South Carolina, Iowa, New Hampshire, and so on. Yeah. But speaking of Bezos, obviously, uh, you know, Amazon just poured tons and tons of money into some down ballot races in Seattle and failed. Some progressive candidates prevailed there despite that. Um, you know, there were there were other progressive candidates winning in other places from Charlottesville to San Francisco. Does all of that, uh, you know, all of that success this past election cycle give you hope for 2020? Absolutely. I think what we're starting to see everywhere from Seattle down even to California with our new DA race that, yeah. that just happened is that there is a very strong grassroots movement that's developing in the United States all the way from from uh, local seats all the way up to the federal and, and into the presidential primaries. And so that's when we, you know, we were just swinging through the state of Iowa and we're talking about this is not just about a presidential election. This is about a grassroots movement in the United States. And I think we're winning, we're beating the billionaires and we're protecting and expanding economic rights for everyday people. And, uh, you know, several of those candidates who won this past week were champions of the Green New Deal. Of course, you've been a major champion of the Green New Deal. Um, is it necessary to take on uh, big money in politics to achieve a uh, really tr uh, transformative climate policy? Absolutely. Uh, one of the big reasons that we're in the situation that we're in right now is because of the corrupting role of big money in politics with lobbyists and so on. Um, and you know, we, we wouldn't be having this climate crisis at the level that we'd be happy, that we are having right now, if corporations like Exxon Mobil hadn't l dumped so much money in lobbying the federal government against taking decisive climate action as far back as 1989. Uh, and it seems like the climate crisis is really, uh, you know, a winning topic uh, for bringing out voters. Uh, this past weekend in Iowa, you know, you had several rallies uh, with Bernie Sanders focused on the climate crisis, the Green New Deal. You had a record turnout at the rally on Friday, the biggest uh, candidate rally of any in Iowa this whole presidential cycle. What do you think it is about, uh, you know, the Green New Deal, about climate policy that really is uh, speaking to voters in Iowa and other places? It's you know, the climate crisis is impacting every single American. It may be a different type of crisis, whether it's a drought or whether it's floods or whether it's sea level rising or whether it's wildfires. This is really impacting all of us in one way, shape or form. And I think especially with the tragedies in Iowa earlier this year where huge portions of the state were flooded. People are losing their homes. We're talking about um, soybean yields dropping 25% by up to 25% by 2050. This is a true crisis. And so I think that it's something that's really animating and motivating a lot of people to act and to also understand that a small little incremental climate policy is not what's going to fix this problem. We need a massive decarbonization of our economy. And any policy proposal less than that, frankly, is a form of denial of the situation that we're in.